These layer styles don't need to only be applied to text or shapes. They can also be applied to a rasterized image layer as an image effect, like in the examples on this slide. Some of these image effects layers, image effect layer styles options include black and white photo, blue filter, circular vignette, night vision, rain, and sepia tone. The only thing that you have to really make sure of when you jump over to Photoshop and you apply these styles is that the style is intended to be on a layer that is completely opaque. And so I have a picture right here and I've duplicated the background layer and I want to apply an effect to that. If I apply any of the default effects, it's going to look funny, right? And so if I try, if I select my layer and then I try to apply any of these effects, it is solid in most cases, some of them are borders like you can see, but they don't all do cool things. And so if you wanted, if you really wanted to apply this style right here to the layer, you would have some additional steps that would be necessary to make the layer opaque or to adjust the blending mode. But some of the preset styles, if we zoom in over here, if you append, let's say the photographic effects or the image effects, as you append these styles, they're intended to be used on layers that are pictures. And so now if I switch my style to one of the styles that is intended to be applied over a solid layer like a photograph, you can see that it now interacts with the picture instead of just sitting on top of it. And so you may want to consider one of these styles if you're trying to create a cool effect. For example, I thought the rain was pretty cool. Um, it makes it look like your picture is raining and so maybe you could do something to make your picture look like it's at nighttime and then apply this filter of the top to make it look like it's raining. You can even make it look like you're closer to the rain by making the texture bigger. And so you can always edit a style once you've applied it. And so if we zoom in on the layers panel, you can see that this style applies a pattern overlay. And if we double click on it, you can see the pattern overlay has a blend mode of screen and opacity of 70%. And then the pattern is this rain texture. Um, if you increase the scale, it'll make like make it look like the raindrops are bigger on your on your screen, which makes it look like you are physically coming closer to the rain in the picture. And so you can always kind of modify the presets because a lot of them will kind of look stock and sometimes cheesy, but if you modify them and personalize them, then they look like they're yours instead of just like a stock um, setting that you may have choose in Photoshop. Choose, I mean chosen. <laughs> okay, back to the, to the slideshow. Okay, so on this next slide with these examples, we've applied text effects to layer styles to a custom vector shape in Photoshop. Some text effects to layer styles options include green gradient with stroke, red, white and blue, contrast, shaded red bevel, sprayed stencil, swimming pool, and toy. And so for this example, we just wanted to show you again that you don't have to apply a layer style of text and you don't have to apply it to an image, you can apply it to any shape or um, even a selected area that you have, have made. And so I used the custom shape tool in the tools panel and up at the top of the screen here, I just chose a random flower. I thought it would be nice to kind of see what happens on this. And then I'm going to reset my styles. They're kind of getting out of control. And so if you hit the option flyout menu, you can choose reset styles and select OK and it will go back to the default. And then we experimented with text effects too. Even though this is not text, it's still a shape and we'll see what happens. And so we appended text effects too. And then we just clicked through to see what the options would be if you wanted to apply different text effects to this shape. And eventually we found a couple that we liked. You can see as you click through, they're different. And you may like them, you may not like them. But uh, I would recommend giving it a shot and seeing if there's something you like before simply giving up and trying to reinvent the wheel, as we say. Very cool. All right, um, layer effects come in many shapes and sizes. The next few slides here will demonstrate a few of the creative possibilities when you use layer effects. But don't forget, if you really like the result of your layer effect, you could and should save them as a, as a layer style via the styles panel. Like this one, this is an example of a customized layer effect. It's an inner bevel with chisel hard edges set to a depth of 563 and a size of 111. Pretty cool. And so if we jump over to Photoshop, we can show you how to create that one too. 
And so again, I'm going to get rid of my styles panel here. Uh, maybe I went through my styles and I didn't find anything that works for this arrow, which FYI, I did the same thing to create this arrow as I did the flower. I used the custom shape tool in the tools panel. Um, when you use the drop down menu at the top of the screen to choose a shape, the arrows that existed didn't uh, fit my liking. And so I hit the option fly out menu and I loaded the arrows style. And then I found an arrow that I liked and I just clicked and dragged until I created it. Now I could go back and I could change the color and do different things, but instead of that, um, I'm going to try to use settings inside the layer styles dialog box to create a layer effect on the shape. And so if we hit the option fly out menu, what were those settings, Whitney? So it was inner bevel with chiseled hard edge. So we'll select bevel and emboss, and then we'll do an inner bevel and change the technique to chisel hard. The depth was... 563. 563% and the size was 111. 111. And so now I'm starting to create a similar effect on my arrow as I have in the example. Now my example was red and so if you wanted to you could also apply a color overlay effect to your shape or your layer. And so right now when I choose color overlay it wants to apply gray as my overlay. But if you click the little box, it opens a picker and you can choose red. You can see how it blends with the original color. And then you can modify it according to your needs. And so maybe this arrow, which is a different shape than the one in the slideshow, maybe I don't like that depth. And so you can always come back because it is, again, non-destructive editing. And you could decrease the depth and you could decrease the size of the emboss until you get something more like what you're looking for for your needs for your project. Okay, let's, let's do one more before we end this video. What do you say, Whitney? Okay, one more. Okay, let's take a look at the snowflake. Oh, this is a long one, so we should have stopped the video, but that's okay. We'll keep going. We're troopers. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this slide. The top snowflake has the same layer effect settings as the arrow on the previous slide with the 563 and the size of 111. Um, <clears throat> and the lower snowflake here is an example of a smooth emboss set to a depth of 4 159 and the size of 24. Again, endless creative possibilities. And so what's really interesting about these examples is we didn't have to destroy the snowflake at all. We just kind of plugged and chugged and, and tested different examples until we found what was working better for our project. So maybe the first example was was too geometric and too, too hard edged and beveled and so we backed off that but we still wanted it to look like maybe it was popping off the screen a little bit and so we decreased the depth um, until we got something that looks better for our project. Now we would like you to attempt, before we move on to the next video, to recreate both of these snowflakes. So jump to Photoshop, create a new document that's four inches by four inches square, use the custom shape tool to create a snowflake, and then I would like you to try, without knowing the exact settings that we chose, to see if you could recreate something that looks similar to those. When you've given that a try, you can move on to the next video, and we will show you how to apply a texture or a pattern over the top of the snowflake to give it an additional effect or look.